brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Nabijina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdillah. Alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim amma ba'd. All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Insha'Allah ta'ala for tonight's heart softener we will be touching on a beautiful quality. A quality that has been mentioned by our beloved maker in the Noble Quran almost a 90 times. And that is the quality known as a sabr, patience. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with sabr, fill our lives with sabr. May Allah the Almighty permeate our lives with sabr because if we inculcate sabr in our lives, everything becomes easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with lives in this dunya so that we prepare for akhirah. And this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is full of trials, is full of tests, is full of calamities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself says in the Noble Quran, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created death, who created life and death ليبلوكم to test y'all, i.e. to test mankind أيكم أحسن عملا Which of you or which of y'all is best in deeds, Allahu Akbar. So this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is indeed a test. It is full of trials and calamities. So it is of utmost importance that we inculcate sabr in our lives to pass those tests very beautifully. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu once went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, which of mankind is tested the most? Which of mankind is tested the most? Hadith is in Tirmidhi and has been classed Sahih by Imam Al-Albani rahimahullah. Which of mankind is tested the most? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replies, Al-Anbiya, the Prophets, Allahu Akbar. The closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are the ones tested the most. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say, ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ And then the next best and then the next best. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say along the lines of these words that an individual is tested according to the levels of his deen. Allahu Akbar. The higher, the stronger the levels of iman, the levels of his deen be the stronger or the more Trying are the trials of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason being those trials are to polish us to the better. Those trials are for us to secure great rewards in the akhirah. And the best way to pass those trials, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, is to hold firmly on to patience. Patience is such a beautiful attribute that there are so many stories from the lives of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Any prophet you take, let it be Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he had to stay, he had to hold on to patience extremely whilst he was building the boat. You take Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was about to be thrown into the fire, he was patient. When he was in the fire, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to him. Look at the prime example of patience, Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. 
A prophet, Allah the Almighty had blessed him with many children, wealth, cattle, everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test him, Allah the Almighty took away his children, took away his wealth, and he was inflicted with a disease that nobody could come close to him. Allahu Akbar. But he was patient because he was an, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew that the master plan, plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in play and th that all we have to do is to be patient, securing great rewards in this world as well as the hereafter because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afterwards brought about a beautiful cure for Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam blessed him back with more children and more wealth Allahu Akbar look at the story of Ummu Salama radiyallahu anha her husband passes away she's so upset she's so sad she's so worried but then she does as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands her to do so. She says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayram minha. Because in another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that if a person is afflicted, if a, if a person is afflicted with a calamity, he's supposed to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati. O oh Allah, reward me in my calamity. Wa khlufni khayram minha. And exchange that calamity for something or exchange what I have lost. Exchange what I have lost for something that is better than that Allahu Akbar exchange it for something that is better so the minute Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed Ummu Salama radiyallahu anha at the loss of her husband to recite this dua she read it with conviction with belief and then you know what happens Allahu Akbar she lost Abu Salama who she loved very dearly but afterwards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marries her and she becomes from the Ummahatul Mu'mineen she becomes from the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace her loss with something that was far far better Allahu Akbar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as her husband if you take the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was once he had to travel with his wife, with his wife Sarah. He had to travel with her and he had to cross a particular, uh, a particular city which was known to be ruled by an oppressor, by a, a tyrant. So this particular oppressor, this tyrant, he used to have his forces stop the caravans or stop the people crossing the city and check if there were women folk in the caravan. And just in case there were women folk, they would question as to who the women folk were. And if they were, if the, if the men folk used to reply that they are our wives, then the king used to ask the forces to bring the women folk to the palace because he had this. Uh, he was a, such a pervert that he had this fetish of enjoying other people's women. But on the other hand, if they used to say that she is my mother or she is my sister, then they used to allow the caravan to pass. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, the Khalil of Allah, knowing about this king and his oppression and his tyranny, he instructed his beloved wife Sarah that whilst we are crossing this particular city if the king's forces stop us and ask us as to who you are I will say that you are my sister intending that you are my sister in Islam for if I were to say that you are my wife they will uh, they will take you they will take you by force to the king's palace so now they cross the city the forces stop them and they question Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in regard to his beloved wife Sarah and she was a, a, a lady who was extremely beautiful. She was extremely beautiful. So he replied, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, that she is my sister, intending that she was his sister in Islam. But then the forces, the minute they saw the exquisite beauty of Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, they had, they bickered amongst themselves and they decided we have to take her to our king because she's so beautiful. And then they take her even though Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam had said that she was his sister. They take her to the king's palace. 
Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, what does he do? The Khalil of Allah, the friend of Allah. It is a test. His beloved wife is being abducted and taken to the king, a king who is known for his oppression. He immediately turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah. And that is the beauty about sabr, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam. Sabr is many a time linked with salah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabr wa salah. Seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through patience and prayer. In Allah ma'asabirin. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the ones who are patient. Allahu Akbar. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam immediately turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah, in dua. And scholars mention that it was one of the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the palace as if it was made out of glass and he could see what was happening at that time now let's move on to sarah alayhi salatu was salam she enters the palace the king he was enthralled by her beauty and the minute he set eyes on her he outstretches his hand to touch her because like i said he was a poet she prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hand immediately paralyzes itself and falls to the side. Allahu Akbar. He cries out, what has happened to me? What has happened to me? Pray and relieve me of this difficulty that I am in and I will not harm you. Then she prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and then the king's hand goes back to normal. But then he cannot stop his carnal desires. He cannot stop his evil desires. He outstretches his hand a second time. She prays again and his hand paralyzes even further. And he is even in more excruciating pain. He again cries out, what is this magic? What is this sorcery? Pray and get me out of this problem. I will not harm you. She prays again. His hand is released. He outstretches it a third time, Allahu Akbar. She prays a final time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paralyzes his hand again. And then he realizes that he cannot do anything here. He cries out to his forces. He says, he calls his soldiers and he asks them, why have you brought a witch into my midst? And then he cries out, if you pray and if my hand goes back to normal, I will not harm you, but rather I will gift you with something and send you on your way. Allahu Akbar. She prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his hand went back to normal. He gifts her with Hajar alayhi salatu was salam and sends her on her way. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was now in prayer. He's waiting for his beloved wife. And then she comes smiling with Hajar alayhi salatu was salam. At the outset of the story, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, what did it look like? A trial, a calamity, Allahu Akbar. Your beloved wife is being kidnapped, being abducted by a tyrant, by an oppressor. At times our weak minds cannot perceive the great plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we see is the tip of the iceberg, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam. A great plan is in play behind the scenes. Look who comes through the lineage of between the bond through the bond of Hajar alayhi salatu was salam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Who comes about, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam? None other than our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. It was through a trial. Scholars explain that it was through a trial Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about that blessed union where Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and Hajar alayhi salatu to a salam united in a bond Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes through that lineage my dear respected elders brothers and sisters in Islam we cannot perceive the great plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is upon us weaklings it is upon us to inculcate patience and to look at trials to face trials with patience we become victorious in that trial and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bound to reward us for the difficulty, for the calamity that we go through. And nevertheless, we will also be rewarded in the akhirah. Great rewards by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us hold on to patience. Let us hold on to salah for indeed by doing that, 
We win the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah the Almighty states in the Noble Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are patient and also we win the ma'iyatullah. We become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the ones who are patient. So may Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins and may He the Almighty fill our hearts with patience. May He the Almighty permeate our lives with patience so that we can cross through these trials and calamities easily crossing out over to the eternal akhirah where we shall enjoy perpetual bliss and happiness may he the almighty accept all of our good deeds and may he unite us in the gardens of jannah with our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam just as how he united us here tonight wa akhir da'wai an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin jazakumullah khair donate now go to www dot the daily reminder dot org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.